Okay. Last time we timed our motor. This time we finished assembling it. First we place the crank position gear by lining up the keyway and having the engraving face the outside. If using a modified set like this one, it'll use a dowel pin instead of a keyway to keep the gear in place. Now we install the front oil seal. Start by oiling up the edges and then pressing the seal into the timing cover. The service manual will specify what depth it needs to sit at. To install the timing cover, we need to start by cleaning all of the mating surfaces, applying a thin layer of Honda Bond, and installing the required o-ring. Quickly clean the mating surface on the engine block and then position the timing cover. Place the hardware and then tighten it to 8.7 foot-pounds. We follow the same process for the oil pan. Clean the mating surface and apply a thin layer of Honda Bond. I'm running an aftermarket oil pan. This oil pan has baffling that will keep the oil where it needs to be when cornering and has a higher oil capacity which will help keep the engine cool. Clean the mating surface on the engine block and place the oil pan. When installing the hardware, I noticed that the hardware kit I bought had bolts that were too long. So I had to remove the oil pan, clean the Honda Bond, and order the correct size bolts and do it all again. Torque the bolts in the sequence shown to 8.7 foot-pounds. If it wasn't obvious, I've been building this motor in my apartment, but now I'm moving out. I had to sneak this thing out when management wasn't there and transport it to my new place. My new place also had a garage, so I was able to get the MR2 out of the storage unit and move it in with me. After I powder coated my valve cover, I had a friend of mine paint a memorial piece on it for me. He's very talented, I've linked more of his work in the description. Continuing with the engine build, we take the chain tensioner cover, apply Honda Bond to the mating surface, and place it on the timing cover. This is held on by three bolts torqued to 8.7 foot pounds. Now we install the water pump housing. This water pump housing is from a K20A2, since I'm going to be running a stock oil cooler. The K24 housing does not have the capability of running it. We clean the surfaces on the engine block, the housing itself, apply Honda Bond, and install the O-ring. The housing is held on by four bolts, torqued to 33 foot-pounds. Next is the water pump itself. We start by cleaning the mating surfaces. I somehow lost the footage, but before installing the water pump, an O-ring needs to be placed. Once in place, the water pump is held on by six bolts, torqued to 8.7 foot-pounds. Now we're installing the oil cooler. I started by removing this rusty old heat shield, and again, we clean any mating surfaces, install the O-ring, and torque down the oil cooler to 54 foot-pounds. The block that's being used here is a K24A4 out of a Honda Element. This block was never designed for this oil cooler, so the coolant passage above is blocked and we're gonna need to remove the plug. After that, we'll install a fitting from a Honda S2000 that'll allow the coolant to flow where we want it. The last bit to run this oil cooler is the fitting for the water pump. This is what directs the flow of the coolant towards the heat exchanger. To install this fitting, we need to install the required O-ring and it is held on by one bolt torqued to 8.7 foot-pounds. With everything installed, we can run the plumbing between the water pump and the oil cooler. The hose kit only fits one way, so it's pretty simple to figure out. I use some silicone lubricant to help slide the hoses on. After that, it's just a matter of tightening the hose clamps. That wraps up our oil and cooling system on the motor. Next time, we get the motor ready to be installed in the car. But until then, thanks for watching, and take care.